Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for being here today. As always, if you are new here and you are interested in true crime, tarot cards, tarot readings, on self cases, and the occasional candle making video, please consider subscribing. For those of you who come back every week, I thank you. Um, again, I just want to remind you guys, uh, tarot readings, private tarot readings are available. All you have to do is email me. Turnaround time is within a day. Um, if I'm available right then and there, I will turn around and do the reading at that time. Uh, but generally no more than a day's turnaround. And I want to thank all of you who have reached out for a private tarot reading because uh, it has been wonderful. I've had a lot of you reaching out for private tarot readings and so I really do appreciate that. But if you are interested, all you have to do is email me. My email will be in the description and then we will set it up. How those videos are done, how those readings are done rather, I set it up just like this, how I do a regular weekly video. I record it, you see me shuffle, you see me pull. And I will then upload it to YouTube, uh, YouTube as an unlisted video, which just means you are the only one who can view that video unless you choose to share that link with someone else. You are the only one that can view that video. You can go back and you can watch it as many times as you want for as long as you want. It will be up there unless you ask me to remove it and I absolutely will if you want it to be removed. Um, otherwise, you can just go back and take notes, whatever, however you want to do it. So that's how the private readings are done. Um, I get a lot of people that ask me that so that's why I always repeat it in every video because I will get people to uh, ask me how do the videos work and do we FaceTime each other and so I just want everybody to know that I do not FaceTime anyone or call anyone. Uh, it is definitely uploaded just like this and that way you are free to watch it whenever you're available and you can go back like I said and rewatch it a million times if you want. That is absolutely fine. Alright, so for today's video, um, this is actually going to be a part two. This is going to be a part two to Lizanne Froon and Chris Kramers who uh, disappeared and then unfortunately their remains were found uh, in Panama and I believe that the date was 2000, I think it was April, let me see here, let me get the exact dates here because I want to be exact. I don't have a whole lot of information as far as the whole background because I, I did this before and so uh, I did this video before so if you're not familiar with this video there's a lot of information out there this is a really well-known case um, alright so Chris Kramers and Lucanne Froon or Lucanne Froon were Dutch students who disappeared on April 1st 2014 while hiking the Pianista Trail in Panama um, portions of their bodies were found a few months later. Cause of death could not be determined. But I believe that the Panama government said that they believed that the students, these two girls, had accidentally fallen off of, off of a cliff after becoming lost. So uh, there you have it. Um, I don't believe that they fell off of a cliff. I don't believe that they were lost. Uh, and so I've got a video that I want to share with you guys in the description box. I really recommend that you guys watch the video if you're involved in this case. Um, a lot of good information, a lot of new updated information, and I don't think anyone could really walk away from that video thinking that these girls were lost and got hurt. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, this is going to be a part two to that reading. I cannot remember when I did that video, but it's been a while. It's been months ago, and so I have had quite a few people comment in the comment section asking me for a part two, and so that's what today's video is going to be, is a part two to that. This time though, based on the video that I'm going to be sharing in my description and based on that video and the information that that video has, one of the main key things that that video points out is that Lisanne and Chris possibly returned back to town after hiking. So it sounds like this trail that Chris and Lisanne were traveling was a linear trail, which just means that there's one way in, one way out. There's no deviating, there's no getting lost, there's no, if you take a wrong turn, you might end up in the middle of the jungle. It's literally a trail in and a trail out. And 
it actually has a clip in there where I think it's Chris's parents, her mom and dad, actually travel to Panama. And they hire the exact same tour guide, who I think his name is... Um, I have his name written down here. Feliciano. Feliciano Gonzalez, I believe, is the tour guide. And I believe that they hired him. And he takes them on this tour guide, the exact same tour that these girls were hiking. And the dad is recording everything. And so you can literally see this trail that they're walking on. And he is saying throughout this video recording that there's no way that the girls could have gotten lost or turned around. It's literally, again, like I said, one way in, one way out. There's no cliffs that the girls could have fallen off of. So what the Panama government is trying to put out there that it was an accident or that they fell off of a cliff, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And so after watching this video, you kind of, you kind of start seeing these other possibilities. Uh, there's some key characters in this story that are suspicious to say the least, uh, but it sounds like a lot of people, at least several people seen these girls return to the town after their hiking and get into a car, get into a red car, and from there they have never been seen again. So is it possible, I, I want to ask, is it possible that these girls did go on this trail and did return and something happened to them after and maybe their items were put back out there to make it look like it was an accident? Uh, there's also a couple of key characters that I want to go over. We have um, Miriam, who is the host family. I believe her... Uh, I, I actually think it sounds like, from what I read, she has hosted several foreign or international students. Uh, I don't think that Chris, San, or Chris and uh, Lizanne were the first international students that she hosted, so I don't know what her reputation is like or if other people who have stayed there with this Miriam woman, have they come forward and talked about their experience with her? I don't know, but we've got Miriam, we've got the local tour guide, Feliciano Gonzalez. Interesting about him is that after the girls went missing, he did actually go to Miriam's home and he asked for a key or he asked for access into the girls' private rooms, which she did allow him to go in there. Uh, apparently, they spent about 30 minutes looking inside the girls' rooms. Uh, and it wasn't until five hours after that that Feliciano actually called the authorities. So that's kind of weird. Why would Miriam allow him to go into the girls' rooms? Why would he need to go into the girls' rooms? And what would he do in there for a whole 30 minutes? So that kind of is weird. And then we have Henry Gonzalez, who is um, the oldest son of Feliciano. So Feliciano's oldest son, who happened to be part of a youth gang. And apparently uh, were in the area, he was in the area, he had heard of the girls, he had met the girls, um, and apparently later on after the girls went missing and their remains were found, someone uh, or several people actually overheard him talking while he was drunk, talking about a run-in, a quote run-in, with the girls that he had at the pharmacy. And I want to go into the pharmacy story a little bit because in the beginning of this video, the person who's doing this video talks about how, I believe it was Chris, had a cold or something was going on with her. She was sneezing. I think Miriam had reported to the authorities that the day prior, she did notice that, and I want to say it's Chris, but correct me. Um, I apologize if I'm wrong, but I think she said Chris did seem to be coughing and sneezing and it did sound like she had a cold and later the girls were actually seen going into a local pharmacy buying cold medication which made sense if one of the girls had been sick so this henry guy which is the tour guide's son feliciano his son his oldest son apparently ran into them at the pharmacy and so he did have knowledge of these girls he knew that they were in town he had seen them and apparently he is kind of known around town as kind of a womanizer and especially is intrigued by international students, female international students. And so there could be a connection there. So uh, then we have 
Polinio Montenegro, who is a driver for the hotel. He possibly met Chris and Lasanne as they were leaving Boca del Toro. We have George Riviera Miranda, friend of Henry's. The pharmacy is actually owned by his mother, so there's some connections here um, with all these key, key players and key characters. We have the taxi driver who dropped the girls off at the trail. His name is Leonardo Gonzalez. Uh, he actually claims that he did see Henry and George Gonzalez in the Pianista area on April 1st. Uh, so he is actually putting Henry and Leonardo at the crime scene on the day that the girls went missing. And it just so happens that on April 1st, a year later, 2015, he was found dead, drowned. So lots of, uh, like I said, key characters here that are just very, very strange. Uh, we have a Cesar Costello, who is a climbing instructor, who was also in the area at the time uh, Leonardo was found drowned. And he actually did not think that, I guess they were trying to make it seem like Leonardo drowned by accident. This man, Caesar, actually seen Leonardo's body after he had died and he actually said that he thought that the man looked like he had been murdered. It didn't look like he had drowned. Uh, he was also later found dead on April 8th, 2018. So we've got these, these, this small little group of people. Then at the same time we have this gang. We have this, this local gang that is believed to have had something to do with it as well. And that is called the La Banda, which is the ND5. And it's a gang of five in the area at that time. They were very active in that time. Uh, it just so happens that uh, I have the names of the gang members here. And they're all connected. We have this Gonzalez name, last name Gonzalez. That's very, very, a uh, lot of key key players. It seems like the Feliciano, the tour guide, his son, is actually in this gang as well. So I'm going to actually list the name of the gang members. There's five of them. And what I want to do, I have them on little cards, is what I want to do is I want to pull a card for each one and kind of see what comes out for each one of these characters. And I would also like to pull some cards for Feliciano. I would like to pull some cards for Henry. I would like to pull some cards for Miriam. And it just kind of get an idea of what's coming out for each one of these people. But for the gang, for this gang of five, we have Heriberto Gonzalez, George Miranda, Jose Murgis, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing these names right, so forgive me, Osmond Gonzalez, and Henry Gonzalez. So we have a lot of Gonzalez names. Um, again, Henry Gonzalez is Feliciano, the tour guide. That is his eldest son. So connections everywhere in this small town, and it makes you wonder what they're trying to hide and what is the Panama government trying to hide. Uh, are they trying to make this look like an accident because, you know, they are a tourist destination. I'm sure that they bring in a lot of money annually for tourism and you know it would probably be better not you know if there was a murder or something that they were trying to cover up or hide uh, it probably wouldn't look really good on their end so let's take that into consideration also I do want to mention about this trail the trail apparently is backed up to a lot of the locals backyards so this is not a trail that's out in the middle of nowhere. There are people around. And in the video that I am going to share in the description box, they do interview some of those locals in that area. And some of the women that they interview do say that they remember seeing Chris and Lasanne that day. They were walking. Because like I said, this trail is kind of almost right backed up to their property. And so if the girls had gotten injured or something had happened, surely someone would have come across them on this trail because it is a very, very well used and very well known trail. As a matter of fact, in the video, uh, while the parents are walking on this trail, some locals are actually 
walking their cows in the trail because I guess they do that to kind of keep the trail kind of cleared out for the tourists and the walkers. And so they actually had to stop and let these locals pass with their cows. They had two or three cows that they let go on in this trail ahead of them. So it seems like there's it just doesn't seem like there's a good possibility that the girls would have gotten injured and no one would have come to their rescue. It just kind of seems like it's not that kind of a trail. It really isn't. And it was different seeing it like that than what I had in my mind because, again, you're thinking in the middle of the jungle. Uh, but it, it it's not really that way at all. And so I have a hard time believing that they were injured or got lost. Uh, it just doesn't seem likely. So on that note, I want to get right into the reading. Um, I have three decks out. I have the Heaven and Earth Tarot, I have the Haunted House Tarot, and I have the After Tarot. So, and I also have my pendulum, and I did use this in my last video, and I'm thinking about incorporating it into more videos. And so I just want to ask a point blank question, yes or no, um, if this is an accident, and see what comes out. So again, just to go over how I, I work with my pendulum, I do go in a circle. So if it swings to the right, which is clockwise, it's a yes for me. And if it swings to the left, which is counterclockwise, it's a no for me. So the first question is, um, is this an accident? Did, Lu did Lisanne, I keep wanting to say Lisanne, did Lisanne and Chris have an accident that led to what happened to them. Did Lisanne Froon and Chris Kremers have an accident? Yeah, see, um, that's a hard yes. That's actually a hard yes. So that's interesting. Um, okay, so let's ask again. Is there foul play involved in this case? Is there foul play involved in this case? Okay, so that's also a yes. So accident could be anything. Um, let me ask again. <coughs> Did Chris and Lisanne get lost? Did Chris and Lisanne get lost? Let me go up a little bit more. Yeah, that's a no. All right. Did Chris or Lisanne get injured in any way? That's kind of a difficult question, but. Did they fall off of a cliff or did they get injured naturally on this trail? Yeah, right away that's a no. I think my first question wasn't specific enough about the accident because, you know, what whatever happened to them be, could be considered an accident. So let me ask more specifically. Um, I, I'm... I hate to use the term murder, but I do want to ask if Chris and Lisanne were, in fact, let me get up a little bit further, were, in fact, murdered. Yeah, that's a big yes. All right, so I feel like that kind of opens up. I, I don't honestly believe that this is an accident as far as what the government is trying to put out there that they fell off of a cliff they hurt themselves they were stranded nobody found them they were there for 10 days with no food no water i don't think it's that um i definitely think it's something else and so uh foul play uh let's see what comes up in the cards i cannot remember the cards or the deck of cards that i used in my first video But, and I know it wasn't the heaven and earth because I know I didn't have that deck at that time, but let's see what comes up with this deck. Okay, what kind of information? I want to ask if we can find out whether or not they did actually return from that trail and something happened to them after that. 
or if all of this happened while they were out on the trail. Oops. All right, so did Lasan and Chris return from the trail or did all of this happen on the trail? Did Lasan and Chris return from the trail, or did this happen to them while they were out hiking that day? So we've got, ooh, that's a very, very bright light there. All right. Um, hmm. You know what? Just looking at that Ten of Pentacles, it makes me feel like they could have potentially returned to town because if, it, if you look at that card, he looks like he's kind of walking through a doorway. It's a keyhole, but it looks like he's kind of coming from behind the keyhole or the doorway and he's going into the town and I honestly feel like it's a this is a good start for me to actually consider the fact that they could have returned to the town gotten into a car with someone and whatever happened to him happened to him at that time and maybe those things that they found in the woods were placed there at a later date but if you look at this guy here, I mean, it really looks like he's kind of coming out of a dark area and he's stepping into a town, basically. And it's, you know, it's got the people. It's like a hustle and bustling town. And so he's just kind of walking into it. And so that really makes me feel like it is a possibility that they, they came out of this trail and returned. And from there, something happened. Uh, we've got two people here standing outside. We've actually got we've actually got two dogs, two people, and a child. So, and I believe that there's some controversy, or I, I didn't really look into the dog. I can't remember if there was a dog with them or someone claimed that there was a dog with them. I know there's a dog involved, uh, and this does have two dogs right next to the guy. Um, and then we've got the two people over there. So in in the town, so definitely makes me feel like there's other players in this besides just the girls. There's other key players that are important to this case. And then I'll get the High Priestess uh, when I'm done here. But I, I had to say that because looking at that keyhole really made me think that right away. Alright, and then we have the Nine of Pentacles. Ten of Wands, King of Cups reversed, the Magician reversed, so they were definitely dealing with some someone tricky. We've got the Ace of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups, makes me think of this Henry guy, the Prince of Cups. Alright, so really quick, I just want to say that this Ace of Pentacles I don't feel like the trail in this card has ever been more important than it has been in this particular reading. So I, I think the trail is definitely important to a certain to a certain degree, but with that ten of pentacles, I really do feel like you know this is this is a beginning card, and so I, I do feel like all of this began at that trail. Whatever happened, I think that that was kind of the catalyst. It, it happened when either someone seen them, you know, head towards the trail or when they shared with someone that they were planning on going on this trail. But that was, I think, the, the definite beginning of the plan. So, again, whether it happened on the trail or whether it happened 
when they returned to town uh, and they were taken back later, uh, possibly to be disposed of, that's a possibility. So, but I, I do believe that the trail is, is definitely important and I believe that this was planned by whoever. Okay, they knew that this was an opportunity because that's how I'm looking at that pentacle. It's an opportunity at this point. And then whoever is doing this to me is the magician reverse. So this is someone very sneaky. Uh, you know, it came out reversed. This is someone who, uh, again, you know, has all the tools necessary to make anything happen. Um, but when it comes out reverse like that, that is definitely someone that is willing to uh, cross all boundaries, morally, ethically, whatever the case may be, to uh, you know reach the goal that he's trying to reach. This is someone who will go to all lengths to get what he wants. And so uh, with this Knight of Cups here, and also that King, King of Cups, uh, I, I feel like in this situation here, we've got, let me put this first here. We've got someone really, really sneaky here that wants something. What does he want? He, he's willing to go to all lengths to get it, right? And then we have these two cards here. We have the Knight of Cups and we have the King of Cups. I'm actually kind of looking at this as father and son. Father here, king, son here. So we do have a father and son in this storyline and it just so coincidentally happens that these two cards come out because we do have we do have uh, Fel Feliciano, uh, I, I think that's how I said his name, Feliciano Gonzalez and we have Henry Gonzalez. So Felicio Gonzalez, if you remember, is the tour guide and then his son Henry who is also a member of the uh, notorious uh, five... La, La Banda, the ND5 gang that were uh, in very active at that time. So we do have, actually, ironically, uh, it's not even, I don't even believe in coincidences, so we do have a father and son in this storyline, and sure enough, I'm looking at the knight and the, the king as father and son. The Knight of Cups also kind of ma matches what they say about Henry in this video, that he is kind of this, you know, m m woman's man or whatever he looks at himself as, uh, likes the international girls, loves talking to women and all that kind of stuff. And so did he look at these girls as something that he was interested in? I feel like he was potentially looking at them, one or both of them, as... Uh, m more along the lines of that, you know, attracted to them in that way. And so I have to wonder if maybe he uh, potentially tried to reach out to them or tried to make advances and they didn't want anything to do with it. And, uh, you know, that's when the reversal of this magician comes into play. So I find it very concerning that we do have, like I said, a father and son in this storyline and a father and son, I believe, coming out in the reading. And then we have the Princess of Cups, which is the Page of Cups. So I actually kind of, this makes me feel like he was this Knight of Cups here, only interested in one of them. And I don't know which one that is, but I feel like he was only looking at one. So one was a target and one was not. But I don't think even the one had anything, any interest in him whatsoever. That is, that was the furthest thing from her mind, I believe. And so that really uh, could have possibly ticked him off. Uh, and so I, I, I do feel like definitely there was one that was the target. I actually feel like now that I'm looking at this one here, the uh, High Priestess, this almost makes me feel like they knew right away that there was something off. I actually do feel like with this coming out upright that they had a feeling that something was off with whoever they came in contact with. And I believe that they came in contact with at least this knight, okay, which would be the younger person, the son, possibly. Possibly Henry, possibly someone else, but I believe that there was something n not feeling right because 
I always, I, I don't ever typically use a spread per se, but I do pay attention to the way they come out and what they come out above, what they come out below of or, or below, what they come out next to. And so when I'm looking at this High Priestess and she's right above the Knight of Cups, that makes me feel like there was a feeling. There was a feeling in regards to this person here because this is all about intuition. Not always about only intuition, but that is a big part of the High Priestess. And so this makes me feel like th there was some th there was some off feeling about this person. And these girls were not having it. The one girl, whoever he was after, was not having it. She was not interested in, in it at all. Um, and, and I think that he gave her a very uncomfortable feeling. So again, what I really need to know is for... <sighs> For sure. I, I mean, I honestly, with this Ten of Pentacles, I, I have to wonder if they did potentially go back to town. I'm going to have to draw more cards on that to really kind of know for sure. Because if they went back to town, then that means, honestly, if I pour, if I pull more cards and I pull out the Chariot, I will then feel more comfortable to say that, yeah, it's a possibility that they came back out of the trail area and got into a potential car so I don't know I'm gonna have to pull more cards uh, still and then we have the nine of pentacles and we have the ten of wands so it's interesting because I'm looking at the ten of wands and I'm looking at this ten of pentacles here they're both tens right so it's kind of at the end it's at the end of the trail it's at the end of the cycle that's what tens are in, in tarot. Kind of not really, I hate saying the word end uh, because I don't believe in endings. There's just continuations and constant movement. And so one could say the end, another could say the beginning. So you're just on that, that cusp of change, right? But conclusion, completion. And I actually do feel like they finished the trail. I'm looking at that Ten of Wands and I'm seeing exhaustion. And I feel like they were. I feel like they were actually exhausted. Uh, I feel like they were in good shape and they could handle it. Okay, because I can tell you right now that I, I could not. I could not go out there and hike on a trail for three hours or two hours. It's just like no way. Um, but they were tired. And I think it is, a ch even though it's a, it looks like an easy trail, it's still challenging. Um, it doesn't look like, if you watch the video that I share in the description, the parents, I think it's Chris's mom and dad, again, they record themselves. They're actually with Feliciano, I think. Uh, he is the tour guide that they hired, if I'm not mistaken. But they go out there and, uh, y you know, they're hiking it and it, they're absolutely convinced that they did not get lost or injure themselves at all and so they were able to hike this area um, I think it's the duration of how long that they were gone is what was really making them tired because I think that they were out there for a while and so I, I, I do kind of feel like they did potentially finish we've got two tens here I think they completed the hike that day I really do uh, I think they completed the hike and I think it's a possibility that they returned back to town and uh, again, we're tired, okay? They were probably tired, they were probably hungry, they were probably thirsty, and someone offers them a ride, and you know, what happens from there? So I I'm very curious to see again if the Hierophant comes out. And then we have the Nine of Pentacles. So who is this? Who is this? This is uh, not necessarily, I don't think, in the same realm as the Queen of Pentacles. But this is someone who is, I don't know, when I see this, when I seen this the very first time, I thought of Miriam, the host family. The lady who's running the host family house or whatever it is. Uh, the one who let Feliciano take the key to the girls' rooms and look inside of it for 30 minutes after they you know, were discovered missing. Uh, is this her? I'm going to leave that one out because I want to... I'm curious about that one. Let me see. What do I have about... Okay, so her name is Miriam Guerrero. International students often stayed with her. 
Uh, she gave Feliciano the girls' room key and spent 30 minutes in the girls' room with the tour guide. Oh, so she went in actually to the... She entered the girls' rooms with Feliciano. And apparently they were both in the girls' room for about 30 minutes. So what the hell would you be doing in their rooms for 30 minutes? Unless you're just snooping around. I mean, before you contact the police. So before you even contact the authorities... You're in the girls' rooms for 30... I don't know if the girls shared a room or if it was two separate rooms, but they were in these rooms or this room for 30 minutes looking around. So why would Miriam... Why would Miriam allow him to do that and why would they go into this room? So let me ask a, a follow-up question. Is this Miriam? Is this Miriam? Okay, so it possibly is. We've got the Nine of Swords, which means that she has done this before, in my opinion. Prince of Pentacles, money, money opportunity. Uh, Nine of Wands, okay, so we've got, okay, money issues. The Tower. Work, okay. What is this? The Knight of Swords reversed. All right, so it is definitely, uh, I believe that this is Miriam, actually. And I believe that she does it for money, okay? She does like money. She is probably uh, a hard worker. I've got this and the Eight of, Cu or Eight of Pentacles. So she definitely works. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, she's definitely a hard worker, uh, but this was a money opportunity. Okay, this is a money opportunity. It's not a whole lot of money, but it is a money opportunity. Uh, I do believe with these two tens coming out, well, one's a nine. Actually, they're both nines. Um, with these two nines coming out, I do believe that this is a pattern of behavior. I think that it's a possibility. I said in the beginning I was curious if other people under other international students who have stayed with this Miriam woman if they've come forward and it doesn't mean that you know I, I feel like there's a pattern here there's a pattern of behavior that she possibly you know is she getting paid to uh, give out an itinerary per se uh, you know she tells someone oh hey you know I know that the girls you know they're gonna be out at the trail today or uh, they're going over here, or this is, you know, whatever. I don't know. Is it something like that? Um, but I do feel like there is some, there, there's something going on here, I think, with her for cash opportunity. Um, she's, she's part of this. I, I do believe that she is part of it. And I believe that she has done it more than once with these two cards coming up. I, I, again, with the Five of Pentacles reversed, um, I actually kind of feel like this is, it could be money. I think this is a money opportunity. So it could have something to do with, with money. Um, there could be something else going on uh, with this card here uh, in regards to Miriam. But I actually, we've got the, the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords, so we've got action. This is a lack of action, though, when it comes out reversed. A lack of action, a lack of movement. Action someone should be taking but isn't. And then we've got the tower. To me, this is like... This whole thing is going to collapse from within. I, I feel like with the tower coming out, we've got something going on. Like we've got some sort of networking between all of these characters. Uh, is it a trafficking situation? It, was this a trafficking situ situation gone wrong? Um, I, I kind of feel like there's, with these cards coming out, I feel like there's money to be made. It's happened more than once. But we have a lack of movement. So is Miriam deciding not to do it anymore? Did this scare Miriam? Uh, did this kind of the attention for these girls, did it kind of scare her and make her not want to do it anymore? And, you know, this is a result. 
you know, this happened in what, 2000 and, when did this happen, 2015 or 2014? 2014, so you're talking what, six, seven years now? Um, I would be curious to know what is the current status of Miriam, this host woman, or this host family, or whoever it is. Uh, I would be curious to know what her situation, her current situation is now, because I feel like this is like a whole network thing that Miriam is part of. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, like I said, it doesn't mean that she turns over everyone that stays with her, but I do believe that this has happened before, and it, it's like, it, I feel like there's something specific about Lisanne and Chris's case that kind of blew this whole thing wide open. I don't know if it's the attention. I feel like it's the attention. I feel like it's the international attention that this case got and still actually has to this day that actually kind of blew their whole their whole plan up. It just it, it just wasn't maybe they had to stop or something. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I do feel like this is this is like a, a, a group of people that are involved in this. Um, I do want to ask about specifically if they were taken anywhere. If they if they did return to town, for sure. I'm I'm really curious to have some more cards back up that Ten of Pentacles because, like I said, I'm still not a hundred percent convinced that they came back, but I'm I'm leaning that way. All right, Ten of Cups. So we've got the Ten of Cups, we've got Temperance, we've got the Five of Swords, Deception, Seven of Swords, Four of Swords, Six of Swords reversed, Jesus, King of Swords, man. Seven of Wands, Lovers reversed. Hangman. Alright, so I'm not getting I'm not getting that chariot. That's what I'm looking for, to be honest with you. I'm not I'm not picking up the chariot. So as of as of right now, I, I I'm leaning towards them possibly returning to town after the trail, but it all started with the trail. It started the minute they got onto that trail. There was something already in the works. There was something already being planned or was planned when these people, whoever they are, knew that these girls were going to be on this trail. This was an opportunity. That Ace of Pentacles tells me that this was an opportunity to be had, and they took advantage of it. So we've got the Five of Swords. So again, we've got this gang of five. We've got the gang of five, and we've got the Five of Swords. You know what? We have that Five of Pentacles, too. We've got the Five of Pentacles. Um, I have to wonder if... I, I feel like there's a significance to that as well. We've got this Gang of Five with Henry, Osmond, Jose, George, and Heriberto, if I'm saying that right. So we've got the Gang of Five that was very well known in the area at that time, and we've got two fives. All right, so we had the Five of Pentacles reversed, and we have the Five of Swords. So I, I and this one came up in Miriam's reading. So I asked about Miriam when I pulled this one here, the Five of Pentacles. And so I do feel like there's an association. There's some connection between Miriam and either all of these members or at least one of the members. There's a connection. Uh, I do believe that she is kind of like part of this whole whole thing and they're all covering for each other. And then we have the Five of Swords. So this to me, uh, usually when this comes up, it makes me feel like there could be friction amongst these five people. Maybe they are all not seeing eye to eye. They're not seeing, they're not possibly agreeing uh, as far as how to deal with a situation. And when I was when I was watching this video, it sounds like it sounds like there's a couple of key families that are in this area. Um, I, I, it seemed like Gonzalez was one of the family members, and then there was another family called the 
a Sabrosan family, and it seemed like they were kind of rival families, so they, they didn't really get along. And I have to wonder if there's some, you know, maybe some rivalry going on in the town or in this area. Uh, could there be rival rivalry between the five members of this gang? Did something happen? Did something happen with Chris and Lisanne that kind of created some friction that they didn't agree on how to handle it? Um, but I, I do feel like I feel like all these people are connected. And then we have the seven, the seven of swords. So we've got deception. There's deception, I feel like, everywhere in this case. I feel like everyone involved in this situation has some information that they're not telling. They're holding something. I, I feel that downright to the uh, to Miriam, who is the host family woman, to uh, France, uh, uh, what's his name? The, let me get his name here. Feliciano Gonzalez, which is the tour guide. I feel like there's information that he's not reporting. Uh, I feel like there's other key characters that are definitely covering for other people. Uh, I believe that if they were all truthful and honest, they would have had, the families would have had the information that they needed as to what happened to these two women. Because I do feel like everyone in that area probably knows um, but a lot of people who have come forward and said that they seen these girls or that this happened or if they expressed any kind of opinions that went with the, the main narrative that's trying to be put out there, they ended up mysteriously dead. So I, I do believe that there is something that has happened, foul play. I think that there is a, a small, maybe a somewhat small to medium-sized group of people involved in it. And, you know, this is a seven, so I think that we're looking at literally a group of people, anywhere between five and seven people that are involved in this or at least know what happened. And I believe that one of the girls were targeted. I think that there was one particular person that was interested in one of the girls. And his interest, I think, possibly was um, sexually motivated and then perhaps it ended up kind of you know getting out of control and it caused what happened to happen and that kind of irritated other people in the gang that that's kind of the way I'm looking at the cards tonight in this situation again we've got the lovers reversed the hangman the hangman it makes me feel like again you know this is that waiting card so i i feel like this is kind of the the results or the I, I feel like this is kind of us not knowing what's going to happen for a while uh, it almost gives me a good feeling that it, you know maybe it's saying that right now is not the time it's not going to be right now but eventually this case will be solved that's actually how I'm looking at it uh, and we also have um, actually if I'm not mistaken I think that there was one person in that story that came forward and said something and he was found uh, literally sitting next to a tree. He was found dead sitting next to a tree, I think. Uh, you guys are really going to have to watch the video that I'm putting in the description if you haven't watched it already. It was very eye-opening and it's just, wow. Um, there's a lot of things going on that you don't you don't always hear about when you're watching documentaries on this case and so uh, it just makes you it's like a movie really it is it's like a movie somebody says something they end up dead a year later uh, and so it, it really kind of um, really sheds a light on that local area and how how it's run by these people um, but I actually have a good feeling that more information could come out in this case and uh, the time will come and then we have uh, the seven of wands so the seven of wands does make me feel like the girls tried to defend themselves but they really had no you know this is coming out reversed so I do feel like they had a very it, it, the odds were the odds were not in their favor there were two of them, right? But this is only showing one person. And so I feel like whatever happened to the girls, it happened separately. 
it did not happen at the same time and it didn't happen together i think the girls at one point were separated and i think that they were kind of by themselves defending themselves and so even though they were found their their remains were found in the area kind of together um i i don't i don't think that i think that they separated the girls i really do there was one that was a target one was a target and they were separated and that really like i said they they tried to defend themselves but they really could not um like i said the odds were too stacked against them and so that would be why this would be coming out reversed uh, these two here I feel like are signs from the girls that they are okay. I always say in these readings that whenever a situation as sad as this one, when you have victims that have passed over or crossed over and their cases down here are not solved, um, I, I don't believe that that plays any role in them being unhappy, uh, especially when it's represented by cards like these. So if it came out with a card, because I do realize that not everyone that crosses over is, you know, automatically at peace. And I do believe that that is up to us when we cross over because I still believe that we have free will even when we transition to the other side. And so depending on what we choose to do, and how we choose to see it, yes, I believe that a person can be uh, not content with the way it happened here on Earth. And so that would also reflect in the cards. Uh, I believe it just depends on the cards that come out that are referring to that. And these cards are good cards. This is the Temperance, this is 14, and then we have the Ten of Cups. So we've got the Rainbow. And we've got a couple down there at the end. And I'm not looking at that as a couple. I'm actually looking at that as... Lisanne and Chris. I do believe that even though they were separated at one point, they were reunited on the other side. Okay, so they they are definitely, I feel like, together. They are true friends, and I think that that kind of, to me, squashes any rumors that I've heard about them. You know, somebody actually said in a comment uh, a couple of months ago that they heard that the girls one of the girls was setting up the other girls or that there was some jealousy issues or some friendship issues. I actually don't think that that's the case because I do believe that this card here indicates their true friendship. They were actually true friends. They did care about one another. Uh, they were honest. There was no setting up one or the other. Uh, there was nothing along those lines and I, I do feel like they are they are together they are crossed over and they are together um you know and this is just a, a a good card and this is all about balance here so i do believe that they have chosen um to cross over and be happy uh that's what they've they've chosen to do like i said that doesn't mean that everybody is going to do that but i i think in this case this is what happened they are they are okay both of them are okay and they're with one another and again, I do take that as that because sometimes I look at this Four of Swords, even though it's not really, um, the, there's really, I, it, sometimes I look at this as a passing or a death card, okay, depending on what's coming up around it. And because it is coming below the Ten of Cups and uh, the uh, Temperance card, and then we've got the Six of Swords over here. Because it's becoming below these, I really do feel like this is indicating their passing. Okay, so I, I again, I'm looking at this one here as they, they actually were separated. I do believe that they were separated before anything physically happened to them. Um, they weren't reunited until after. Okay, so uh, whatever happened to them, I believe that they were kind of taken apart and one was taken by one and another one was taken by someone else and uh, they were, whatever happened to them happened to them and then once they crossed over, then they were, they were reunited, but I think that they were separate. And then we have the King of Swords, so this is like the person who's in charge. This is the one that's in charge of this whole thing. Um, and, and uh, you know, he looks fierce. He doesn't look like someone, these, all these guys here, the five, okay, the five, the seven, these are, these are the people underneath of him. 
So this guy here is like in charge of that group, that gang member. Okay, he's the one that's really, uh, you know, calling all the shots. He's he's like their boss. They're 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 his workers. They're working for him. So I don't know who's in charge of that gang. I don't know if it is Feliciano himself. I, I know his son is in that gang. I don't know if he has affiliations himself with it. I don't know if there's someone else. Now this person here, this King of Swords, is older than, than these guys. So that would, that would make sense to me. Uh, he, Feliciano would actually be the correct age. Um, he, you know, this would this would be his uh, people underneath of him, the workers underneath of him. So I do believe that there is a connection between th there's an older person that's in charge, and then there's the younger ones that are doing uh, n the main work or or working for him and reporting to him. And then you have all these outside key players like Miriam. Uh, like some of these business owners that are aware of these things happening and they do it because they're being paid and they're probably scared not to do it because if they don't agree to do it then something could happen to them as well. So I think that that's the kind of situation that we're dealing with. Um, we have the Six of Swords reversed. I actually do, I mean, if you look at this, this is kind of a leaving card, right? This is getting away. This is getting away from something bad or traumatic and trying to get to a situation that's safer, better, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, the Six of Swords is a leaving and putting behind card. And so I have to ask myself who was trying to leave and they couldn't. Okay, someone was trying to leave and I do feel like we're talking about the girls. I feel like they tried to get away. This is actually making me feel like we're talking about the trail again. I have to wonder if they tried to get back, if they attempted to get back. This makes me feel like we're on the trail again. I don't feel like this is town. I, I don't feel like this is the town. I'm, I'm kind of hung up on that one. I don't know if we're talking about town or if we're talking about trail. The trail is, the trail is important because of that Ace of Pentacles. The trail, the trail plays a role. To me, when I see this card, I feel like they are, they are headed in the opposite direction. They are trying to get the hell out of there. They are trying to leave. They know something is wrong. They have a feeling that something is wrong. They know something's wrong and they're trying to get out of there. But it's following them. It's following them. These people were following them. These guys were following them. They couldn't get away from them. They're the birds. How many birds do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six birds up there in the sky that are following. That would be perfect for these five gang members and a father figure. I think that they knew that these people were after them. They knew that they were out there and they were trying to get out of there and just could not. Um, I actually feel like they were stalked on the trail. I really do. I feel like they were stalked on the trail and were taken someplace else potentially and uh, their remains were maybe taken back there. I, I don't necessarily know if this happened all on the trail, but I, I, I think that it started on the trail. It started on the trail. Um, all right, so I want to pull a card for each one of these people, each one of these key characters. So I'm actually going to, let me use the after tarot. All right, so I have, so I can keep track, Herberto, George, Jose, Osman, and Henry. So Henry is Feliciano, the tour guide. That is his oldest son. So Henry is Feliciano's oldest son. So let's keep that in mind. All right. And I want to pull just one card for each of them. Ah. Second, I got my cards backwards here. All right, there we go. All right, 
So the first card I pulled is for, or the first card I'm going to pull is for Herberto Gonzalez. And I want to know their role in Lisanne and Chris's murder. So we've got Roberto Gonzalez, George, Miranda, Jose, Osman, and Henry Gonzalez. So we've got Berto, now we need George, Jose, Osman, and Henry. All right, let me push this down a little bit here so you guys can see. All right, so Berto is the Wheel of Fortune. Roberto, George, Jose, Osman, <laughs> and Henry. Henry is the Ten of Cup or the Ten of Swords. So, in all honesty, I I feel like. <laughs> Uh, to me, the Osman Gonzalez man, okay, he was possibly the lookout person. He was the person that was scouting out the place and watching out and making sure that nobody, you know, whatever. He was the, the lookout person. Jose, uh, you know, possibly something to do with, you know, you know, we've got the Nine of Pentacles, so that's that's finances, money, uh, Jose or George. We've got the two of cups reversed, and then we've got the wheel of fortune for uh, Herberto. So, you know, possibly maybe this is a gambling person. Uh, the wheel of fortune, sometimes I think of that as a, you know, besides the actual definition, it could be somebody, you know, a gambler or something like that takes chances or an actual literal gambler. And so I feel like. You know, this is kind of showing us just a glimpse into what their role is, I think, in this in this gang, um, or a little bit about them. George, we've got the Two of Cups reversed, so possibly uh, going through, at that time, maybe going through a relationship issue or something along those lines. Uh, but what concerns me the most and the one person that I've been leaning towards this whole time is Henry, Henry Gonzalez. So I've got Henry written down down here and he is the Ten of Swords reversed. He is coming up as an air sign. He is coming up as a sword and so did the Knight of Swords and so did the King of Swords. And so I did feel like the Knight and the King of Swords were father and son and exactly, exactly who is coming up as a sword again is Henry. I feel like this has something to do with Henry. I really do. He is a member of this gang. He is related to the tour guide. He would know these girls. He would have seen these girls. He would have, have heard, he would have had heard of these girls. And if you look at this card, it's literally him and someone else transporting. Okay, they are transporting and this card doesn't look very good. We've got the dark skies. We've got this person that looks injured. Uh, or possibly not even alive and we've got transporting of a body and so I do feel like that really kind of shows that you know I, I doesn't make me look very fondly towards Henry and Feliciano so that's kind of where um, I'm leaning so I'm gonna pull a couple more cards just to kind of finish this up but um, like I said, I, I do believe that this is definitely n not an accident. This is more foul play than anything. Um, I do believe that these locals all kind of know what's going on and are covering for one another. And 
some of them are scared. I think Miriam is more along the lines of being kind of torn between doing it for money and being scared for her own safety. Um, especially with that tower coming out, I feel like she's really almost very, very frightened if she doesn't um, follow follow along and, and, and work with these people. But I, I do feel like there's, there's something going on here uh, with these people and they're all connected. So let me pull a couple more cards on Lisanne and Chris and even just to kind of ask if we're ever, I want to, I want to elaborate a little bit more on the hangman and see if there's any kind of indication that this is going to be solved. Will this case ever be solved? Will we ever know for sure what happened to Chris and Lisanne? Will we ever know what happened to Chris and Lisanne? Will we ever know what happened to Chris and Lisanne? Will we ever know what happened to Chris and Lisanne? Will we ever know? Will this case ever be? Will this case ever be solved? The Empress reversed. To me, just looking at the Empress reversed is a female that has information that's not talking. That's what that is to me. She's, I, I feel like this is, again, right away, this is an older female. And I feel like with the fact that, you know, it, it's actually the uh, Queen of Wands. Okay, so it is a queen. Um, and I, I do feel like this is, to me, it's almost aligning with Mariam. And she came out earlier as a Nine of Pentacles, and so uh, I could see her also in the Queen range as well. Um, and the fact that I, I do feel like she has information. Uh, I, I actually don't know how much of a role she has played in what happened to Chris and Lisanne. I think that it would be a role of more or less information of who's staying who and where and when they're going to be here and when they're going to be there. Um, and I, I think that she's actually scared to not do that. And I think that she's kind of being forced to do that. She, she really doesn't want to, especially when that Nine of Swords came out and that Ten of Wands. The Nine of Swords tells me that this really bothers her. I don't think that she likes being part of the, being a part of this, but she feels like for her safety, she has to. Uh, I actually feel like she has some information and she could probably open this whole thing wide open, but she's not going to say anything. She is not going to say a word. And we've got the King of Cups. <laughs> and of course, we've got the Hangman again. So interesting that that's coming out. Uh, we have the Knight of Pentacles reversed. Wheel of Fortune reversed. Eight of Swords. What is this? The Six of Wands reversed. Um, what is that? 20. That's Judgment reversed. Seven. I'm getting a lot of undecisive, a lot of waiting, a lot of it not. Yeah, and, and then this Ace of uh, Wands reversed. I honestly am not very happy with the outcome of this particular pull because I'm specifically asking about if this case is ever going to be solved. Like, are we ever really, really, really going to know what truly happened? And I feel like in this this situation, people know. There are people that are aware, okay, and they could come forward, but they're not going to. 
We've got the King of Pen or we've got the Knight of Pentacles. We've got the Queen of Wands. We've got all these people. We've even got this. Uh, you know, we've got the Judgment card here, uh, but they're all reversed. Even the the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, this is to me like things could change. Things could change, and some new information could be brought forward. But most likely, it, it's not going to happen. Uh, so I don't really feel like I'm not getting a good vibe from these cards that are coming out as far as... And even Judgment. Judgment is um, reversed. And so uh, I don't feel like this is kind of a rebirth, renewal type card. You know, the ending, the beginning, however you want to look at it. And I, I don't feel like this is a good sign that it's coming out reversed as far as... A, some closure to this case. It's like there's not closure yet. There, there's no closure is what it is. Um, and so then we've got the Ace of Wands reversed. Again, this would be that one piece of new information. This Ace of Wands to me represents that one person coming forward. One person coming forward with information and reporting it to the police. But they are too scared. Uh, they're they're frightened. They are not going to say anything. They are trapped in their situation. They don't have any way out. It's this is a ring of fear. Okay, these people are who are aware of what's going on. They are not going to say a word because they are scared themselves. Uh, Miriam is not saying a word. Uh, I think that this King of Cups is kind of watching over her. Okay, he's kind of making sure that she's not saying anything. Uh, this knight over here, he's not saying anything. Uh, no one's saying anything because they know what's going to happen to them if they do say something. Okay, and it's not it's not fun, uh, and they are they are uh, kind of being held hostage with this whole situation. Um, there is one person here. There's one person here, the Seven of Pentacles, that I am looking at as is there a person that we don't know of is there a person that does know something and is kind of debating on whether or not to come forward potentially maybe there might be someone there might be someone but you know I'm looking at all these other cards and I'm just thinking man this is I, I think it would have to be if this were to be solved it would have to be with someone being offered some protection maybe or from investigators outside of Panama uh, it, foreign investigators going in and reopening the case perhaps uh, I think that that's the only way it would be able to be solved but I don't think that you're going to get any information from any of the, the people involved in in that area and then we have the four of pentacles so I, I believe that these people again I, this card here it's like a it's like a doll. It's a puppet. And so I, I do believe that these people are being kind of controlled like a puppet. Uh, they are definitely, I mean, this kind of goes well with this eight of swords here. Um, this is just being controlled, being being forced to do things that you don't want to do, not feeling like you have a choice in the matter, not feeling like you have a way out. Uh, I actually feel like this is more pertaining to the people involved like Miriam uh, that are in this situation and don't really feel like they can not be in this situation because they don't know what's going to happen to them as a result. So uh, I actually, again, we've got the Six of Pentacles reversed. This is give and take. I feel like this is information this is information that could potentially help the case and it's coming out reversed again. So I'm not happy with any of these cards right here, right now. Uh, I don't feel like there's a good opportunity or uh, there's not really one good card here that makes me feel like <sighs> the only hope, honestly, I hate to say that, but the only hope I have is with this person here. I don't know who this person is. There, there's, I feel like there's someone, there is someone that has some information and she doesn't know what to do with it. She, she's decide, she, she's undecisive. She doesn't know what to do or who to turn to or who to give it to. Uh, perhaps she's even scared to give it. I don't know if she will or not, but I think that it would possibly fall down to her. But uh, definitely I feel like this is without a doubt Miriam. And Miriam, the host lady, she's not saying anything. She's not talking. Um, I don't know. This is interesting. I'm going to have to come back and do another reading on it in a couple of months because things change, right? We have free will. And so with free will... You know, these are like a general 
outcome of what's going on or a general insight into what's happening in this case and with the people in it. And so, you know, as human beings, we have choices. We, we can make choices, right? So it's up to us how we uh, decide to go forward and that is going to affect the outcome. And so uh, two months down the road, maybe that, that Merriam card will flip upside right maybe something will happen and two months from now I'll pull a card and it's going to be like this instead and so maybe maybe something has changed in in this person's life and all of a sudden they feel like they uh, do have an opportunity to report what happened or what they know or, or whatever and so I do feel like free will does change the cards uh, over time which is why I do like to go back and hit cases again because things are changing. Things are always changing. So I, I do want to come back and do another third reading on this case and see if anything is changing. Right now I feel like there's too many people uh, that are scared to come forward because of potentially what could come of them if they reported anything. But I actually am kind of leaning towards uh, Feliciano, the tour guide, potentially his son, uh, Henry, uh, who's involved in this potential gang uh, and other possibly people that are involved in this gang maybe targeted one or more of these girls I think it was one and uh, maybe approached them I think that they uh, knew that they were going to be out on that trail that day possibly through Miriam uh, or possibly just seen them go out there and I think that they followed them and I think that they uh, whatever whatever happened I think began on the trail um, and then I think that they were actually, I, I, I can't, I, I'm not comfortable to say 100% that they were actually, that they t returned to town from the trail, but uh, that's a possibility. I, 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 I'm not 100% sure though, uh, but definitely the trail is important and I think that they were actually trying to get back to town. I think that, I feel definitely that is that it is is possible that they were trying to get back to town. I think they were very much trying to return and get back and they were being stalked. They were being followed just like those birds in that six of swords. Uh, so anyway, um, we're going to have to come back and, and hit this one because I, I don't like the ending. Uh, I don't like the last few, few cards that came out and so we'll have to see what changes if anything. Um, but until then, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and uh, I will see you next week. Thank you so much.